Sonia Thaya Karan, a solo entrepreneur, spoke to our Thrive community about the benefits of employing those with disabilities and how their untapped potential can enrich businesses who hire them. Her talk was part of February's SDG 4 and 8 theme on quality education and decent work opportunities. After her presentation, Sonia kindly took questions from the audience. Good evening to all. So the uh, first question which is being asked by our participant, Patrick, to Sonia. Many thanks for your inspiring presentation, Sonia. Do you have an overall sense of optimism about employing people with disabilities in different countries around the world? What do you see as the most significant remaining barrier to this employment, please? Yes, a very good question. So uh, the number one barrier is mindset, the negative attitudes, perceptions, which uh, most of the persons with, without disabilities have. Because for, for an instance, uh, when, when you look at a person with disability, the first thing that comes to our mind is um, this person needs our help or their parents would have done something bad. That's why this person has got this disability. We have so many uh, negative views about a person with disability. But we have to look at that person as a human being like us. It starts with that. So we have to think that okay, they, they also ha have a heart like us. Right? Just ignore the disability. Look at the person with disability as a human being. And look at how best you can make use of their talents, their abilities, uh, which are very unique. So it starts with the mindset. The negative attitudes needs to change. So once that is changed, when you have a positive attitude, then the rest will follow. We will start accommodating them. <coughs> Excuse me. Like, for example, uh, when we see a female employee who is pregnant, uh, we, we tend to uh, give some accommodation for her, right? So if she's feeling weak, <coughs> excuse me, we may tend to uh, give some free space because she's having a weak body due to her pregnancy, <coughs> excuse me. The same way, when we look at a person with disability, we have to be mindful of their weakness but not treat them as if, <coughs> excuse me, I'm down with the flu. So we have to, <coughs> sorry, look at that person as a full human being and not as a half human, right? So then the other things will follow. Have I answered your question? <coughs> excuse yeah, me. I think, I think so, yeah. So there is a, another question which has come up. So, so as individuals in the workplace who have bosses that are not so receptive to people with the disabilities, what to do to engage your boss in that, such a scenario? Can you repeat that question, please? So as individuals in the workplace who have bosses that are not so receptive to people with the disabilities, what do you do to engage your boss? Yes, that's a very interesting question. So number one, as I mentioned, most of the employers, uh, they, they think there would be high cost to hire a person with disability due to the additional uh, accommodation which you have to make. So one thing we can do is create awareness, right? Like we can highlight what are the advantages employers can benefit by hiring person with disabilities, then we can share success stories like I shared Intel, Sys, there are so many, right? So many, uh, I, I'm sure uh, in each of your countries, you all have best practices. So you can highlight those case studies on how those companies benefited by hiring person with disabilities. And uh, third, we can, there are various network which promotes employment of our person with disabilities. Right? So we can encourage our employers to join these networks where they can get exposed to uh, such practices uh, because they may not know how to do this. They may fear about one. Number one is if it's a private number one thing is they may fear about the cost factor. So when they uh, get exposed to similar companies 
who are in the similar industries which have tried this and uh, and they have succeeded they will feel more comfortable to uh, implement those practices inside their organization so uh, in short in one word i would say create awareness and educate employers or uh, even within your network if there are anyone who are not aware of these things uh, share best practices and also uh, like for example like what thrive project is doing so you can organize webinars your forums to join with similar networks who are promoting such uh, uh, practices so these are some easy ways how you can encourage your employers to ensure you also get uh, be part of this uh, uh, action to encourage employers to include them in the formal sector because most of the person with disabilities they are uh, uh, some are doing self employment but what i'm saying is we also need to consider how we can get the inside the formal sector employment especially private sector employees can greatly benefit because they are more into shareholder maximization so by hiring person with disabilities they can also fulfill they are uh, they can increase their top line bottom line results as well because they can get sustainable competitive advantage right so that needs to be highlighted so if it's a ngo uh, say it's a if it's a non profit organization we need to highlight how it will support their objective if it's a private sector we need to highlight how it will support their uh, uh, their profitability goals if it's a state sector organization we need to highlight how it supports the national policy right have i answered the question correctly or do you need for the yes thanks sonia i think that's it so they haven't come up with any continuing questions on that then okay. the another question which has come up sonia is this about the reservation in some countries in some places they do have a reservation for people with a disability when they apply for the job now is this sort of reservation yes. helps in a positive way or it acts in a negative way the reservations for yes, the people with disability because uh, when i did yes the quota scheme yes so now different countries have uh, different policies with regard to quota so ilo uh, states that there are about more than 100 countries which have different quota schemes so it depends whether it's for state sector or should the semi government or private it, it's uh, depending on each country but uh, when i did the research right so i spoke to uh, several disability advocates so uh, what they highlighted was um, there are uh, good and bad sides for that so good thing is it increase uh, automatically it increase employment opportunities for person with this that's a good side but the bad thing is uh, employers what they do is just to show that uh, they have say 10 percentage of their workforce as person with disability or three whatever percentage which they have right uh, they, they will just hire a person with disabilities who may be qualified uh, and they will be doing odd jobs or uh, they, they are they are or they will be um, doing a job with lower pay uh, which uh, those things need to be addressed so you can't just um, hire the person with disability and say in your annual report okay we have 10 percent of our workforce uh, workforce as person with disabilities and uh, do a, a csr campaign and highlight in your employer branding campaign and show off that you have a particular percentage uh, but the real story might be different that the employee might be uh, in a very uh, lower salary or doing odd jobs uh, so uh, it, you should ensure that the job is decent right that's what stg8 says decent work right and also equal pay right and they should be given uh, career opportunities to move up in their career, not just keeping them as the receptionist for the rest of the, uh, say, throughout their employment period. You should ensure how best you can, uh, so that they also can move up in their career, just like uh, an employee without disability. So we don't like to stay in a job uh, as an intern for 10, 15 years. No, we want to become an executive manager or CEO. We want to go up in our career, right? So that's the same interest which an employee with disability may also have. So we have to be mindful of those things as well when introducing quota schemes. Thanks, Sonia. So there is another question. This is regarding uh, the disability benefits which the government provides to individuals. Now, when uh, 
individuals do get this disability benefits, when they get employed, I think they may have to give up this disability benefits. Now, does this uh, help people to encourage to be in employment or they stay away from employment? Does, do this have any sort of impact on employment? Disability Can benefits. Can you that question again, please? Yeah. So there is a, the question is regarding the disability benefits for the individuals from yes. the government. Now, when they get this disability benefits, when they are employed, they won't get the benefits after when they are employed. So do this uh, prevent them from getting into employment or does it help? Yes. Now, there are two things. Uh, when uh, when the employers know that they will uh, get a subsidy from the state for hiring person with disability, right? Uh, automatically, in the back of their mind, what they have is they need to hire some kind of a person with disability and uh, highlight that they are also an employer for person with disabilities, right? Uh, and uh, the benefit part will be obtained right from the state there's no question about that but once again in if you look at in the real world situation right uh, it's a actually it's a very uh, uh, different world because when you go there because i personally visited uh, employers which hire person with this i spoke to employees with disabilities and uh, they are highly talented. They want to move up in the career. And some of them are in the same position for almost last 10 years or five years. Uh, but uh, are, most of them are saying the employers are a bit reluctant to promote them or to move to help them to move up in their career ladder. But the benefits and everything they are getting. But uh, the employee with disability, uh, they, are, they are not um, fulfilling their self-actualization need as per Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Each person has five types of needs, right? Basic needs. And the last one is the self-actualization need. So uh, that is ignored for employees with disabilities. So although they get the benefit and all, uh, uh, we have to be mindful of what this employee with disability needs and how best employer can benefit from their abilities. So at the end of the day, uh, the uh, government state sponsored benefits uh, offered for employers uh, who offer these employment opportunities for persons with disabilities, they should be mindful whether the employees are get benefited and the employers are better. Because if it's not, then the total benefit would work and uh, we are just wasting that per, uh, employee so abilities. So we have to ensure once we get them inside the formal sector, we have to give, give them proper training, see how best we can help them to move up in their career and take uh, also, um, especially with regard to white color jobs uh, and see how best we can make use of their unique abilities. Thanks, Sonia. The other, another question uh, regarding the education accessibility to the people with the uh, disability. Now, we people with a disability doesn't have much access to education, especially with the, the developing countries. It obviously do yes. have a higher impact in uh, getting employed. Is this the reason behind this people getting less employed, people with a disability getting less employed? Is this the reason? Yes, I would agree with your point. Because if you look at uh, developing countries, as countries like Sri Lanka, uh, so most of the person with disabilities, now um, there, there are dedicated schools. Now in Sri Lanka, we have uh, Ratmalana School for uh, Deaf and Blind. So I'm showing sure in each of your countries, you all have specific schools for uh, children with disabilities. Uh, but uh, if you look at uh, developing countries, uh, the quality of education for them uh, is, uh, when compared to children without disabilities, is very uh, poor. So that it, it's like a vicious cycle, because now they have less access to education, then uh, their chances of becoming employable also get very low. So that also needs to be addressed. 
Yes. Thanks, Sonia. I've got another two more questions. With that, I'm done. So now we are in an unprecedented moment in the human history. We are hit with the pandemic. We are hit with war, global warming, climate change, then the economic turmoil, and there are social divisions in some degree in a, almost every way. So how all these things are going to affect humanity as a whole, especially with people with a disability entering the labor market, how is it going to affect them? Because everyone is going to hit, is it going to be much harder for them? Or because of the law enforcement in quite many places, it will be rather comparatively okay for people with a disability. What is your thoughts on that? Yes, uh, can you repeat that question again, please? Because the, we have an era of pandemic and war yes. and things like that. There are quite many things which has happened. Now, yes. quite many people are losing job and things like that. So when the government has come up with the rules and regulations for people with a disability to be employed, now, will they find it difficult to enter the labor market as compared to the other people? Will it be comparatively okay for them when we compare to the other individuals in the market? What is your thoughts on that? Yeah, now, uh, if you look at the pandemic, uh, so uh, the uh, pandemic also gave a lot of opportunities for virtual jobs. So work from home policies, uh, it was there before the pandemic, but after the pandemic, it became quite prominent. So uh, that has led to uh, a lot of freelance jobs, um, So which can create some uh, new doors for person with disabilities, especially those who find it hard to um, move, like people with uh, who are in wheelchairs. So they, they can uh, make use of that opportunity and work on a remote basis, on a virtual basis. But the other side of the coin is, of course, uh, due to the recession, cost of living, now uh, assistive technologies, uh, the uh, actually uh, when you're building ramps and all, uh, there would be additional costs. So um, uh, uh, employers may tend to think twice compared to previous days because of the rising cost of living. So, uh, th so that can be avoided by promoting remote work or virtual through technology, uh, which is on the rise now after the pandemic. Thanks, Sonia. So this is the last question. Now, this is a general question in the sense, recently that a Paul Pullman who wrote that we are entering in an era of conscious quitting, that people want to quit the company if the company doesn't positively impact the whole world. So they want to be on a mission to have a better world. And if the company doesn't, then they are going to quit the company. So this is something which uh, has come up with, and I have read, uh, read one or two articles or blogs regarding that too. So is this going to be the new trend? What is your thoughts on that? This is a general question, yeah. Can you repeat that again, please, sir? So there is, a, uh, we are entering into an era of conscious quitting, which is being yes. written by Paul Pullman, because people see whether the work company which they work for do have a good impact, very positive impact on the world. If it is not, they are going to quit the company. So yes. this is what which some of the HR strategy people are speaking about. Is it true or what are your thoughts on that? Yes, it's true uh, because uh, now unlike those days, uh, um, if you look at uh, the employees, with or even without a disability, now we have access to information uh, through uh, social media. We know everything what is happening. So, <coughs> excuse me. So uh, recently, uh, now in certain tech companies, uh, people are being laid off. Uh, there are a lot of uh, suicide uh, cases being heard in so many leading organizations due to work pressure. Um, and uh, also companies, uh, who are doing unethical practices are being exposed. So not like those, now you can't fool the employees. They know uh, what is happening around the world. You, especially uh, with social media, it's much faster. Now, it, it, just with a uh, one WhatsApp message, you can share the whole thing 
right? Uh, you don't have to, like those days, you don't have to wait till the news reports to you. So everything is available within your fingertips. So employers should be mindful of what decisions they take and uh, they should be ethical, right? First thing is they should uh, respect ethics and ensure SDG goals are incorporated, which will further make them to be a better employer of choice to attract top talent. If not, uh, top talent will tend to switch uh, companies. And also, as I mentioned earlier, after COVID now, uh, there is a high uh, uh, chance. For example, now if you take my story, uh, uh, one thing is because I want to spend more time with my first child. I, I am a uh, stay-at-home mom. So before uh, my marriage, I was an ultra busy corporate professional. I worked nine to five. I was a consultant. I started my career at the bank, leading bank, National Development Bank. And uh, also uh, after marriage, uh, I, I quit my nine to five job and I started working from home. And even now, I uh, am a freelancer. And likewise, we can see there are so many professionals who uh, are moving to freelancing jobs who uh, prefer to work on their own as solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, or who are partnering with like-minded uh, freelancers, right? And uh, the opportunities for top talent to work remotely to start there, it's very high, not like those days. So uh, companies need to be mindful of these things and make sure uh, their decisions are ethical and it supports the greater good, uh, not only uh, to increase profits, but ensure that the society at large are benefiting from whatever decisions they are taking. With just one small mistake, they can share it on LinkedIn, Facebook, coins. It, it can go viral on YouTube and everyone will know about that. You don't have to wait till BBC or CNN reports to you. No not like those days so everyone will get the news immediately and uh, employers have to be very very careful about their decisions thanks a lot sonia so You're welcome. yeah so that's it uh, thanks for enlightening us with your thoughts and answering to all the questions thank you